All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is clear. Please invite your friends. We are a little bit late uh, because I was uh, late, as simple as that. Um, anyway, uh, we will continue today to our topic about uh, Islam as usual. Uh, but as you see in the title, we have uh, a kind of a weird title. It says, Allah ordered the Jews to take Palestine and Muslims reject the order of Allah. Now, is that true? Absolutely. So I hope we will get some Muslims have the courage to call us. And by the way, the title is made based on the Islamic manuscript, not in my belief. I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe in the Muslims have anything to do with Jerusalem. Uh, all of us, we knew that the first time the Muslims ever entered Jerusalem, it was in the seventh century. And before that, not even one person speak Arabic there. And this is according to their Islamic history books and according to the biography of their prophet and according to the Hadith and even according to the Quran itself. So uh, if there is any Muslim who don't agree with us, please give us a call and we will be so happy uh, to take your call. And I'm not sure if you will be happy to hear my answer. You see, the Muslims are people who they got offended very fast for quoting for them what is written in their books i mean those people they are the fastest to to be offended when you are quoting for them what they quote for us every day i mean isn't it the muslims they keep posting quran here and there you know what i mean isn't it the muslims are so excited to post quran for us the second you start showing them what the quran says especially about uh, whatever topic we are talking about, the Muslims, they will lose their excitement and they will be upset, upset and they will be unhappy and they will call you names. So all what I'm you know, doing here, I'm not really uh, adding something new, like I'm not creating a new manuscript for the Muslims. I'm just saying, okay, this is what your book is saying, and this is what your Quran is saying, and this is what your history is saying, and you, this is what you Muslims believe in. So why, when we tell you what you believe in, you get upset? I mean, I noticed that the Muslims always live with hypocrisy, and they have a double standard, and they cannot take the truth. The truth that's you are not even from the land it's called Palestine as you call it and actually the land of Palestine is called such a name not even by anyone this is this is a name was given by the Rome the, the Roman uh, and there is nothing is called Palestinian nothing nothing called a Palestinian so all this hypocrisy and those all lies those are people who came and they invade the land and as usual like now the Erdogan look at this scumbag Erdogan he is giving us a speeches about a human right when he himself he is living in a land that does not belong to him the city he live in it's not his city the country he is on he is this is not his land few hundred years ago the Muslim Turkish the Ottoman they occupy that land and they made it their land this is the truth. He himself is an occupation and he's given us a lecture about what is right, what's wrong. He himself, he keep killing the Kurdish, Kurdish people and he keep bombing the villages of the poor Kurdish. And then he want to give us Israel a speech. Uh, yesterday, the Israeli army bomb, a tunnel made by the Hamas uh, terrorist group. And uh, they killed more, I don't know how many, but they are saying, I saw in some places saying that they are, it's about 200 terrorists. They were planning to make a, a big attack by going under the, the, in the tunnel, and they will appear supposedly inside the Israeli, uh, you know, controlled man. But the Israeli looked like they were waiting for them, and they knew everything about the tunnel, and they were waiting for them until they are backed up inside and ready to go. And then they made them falafel. And then now the Muslims are so upset because Israel killed all those terrorists inside the tunnel. I mean, pff, you want to kill the Israeli and the, and you get upset because the Israeli killed you first? <laughs> I mean, this is a joke. So the Muslims are very, uh, you know, 
uh, very weird people and very uh, uh, hypocrites and you know here we go our Skype is open let us see if there is any Muslim he can prove me wrong in anything I say I challenge any Muslim to call me live and tell me that I am wrong in anything I said anyone Uh, you see the Muslims they want you to know certain things about Islam but they don't want you to know Islam as, as like, like you know as an example the Muslim they keep bragging about Allah is one I mean who care if your Allah is one or three or four I mean this is stupid Abdul let me tell you my friend my friend something about me I have one nose so you know, when the Muslim he concentrate in certain things as if he is the only one who worship one God. There is many pagan religion they worship one God too. Even those who worship the devil, they worship they believe that devil is their God and he is one. But anything else is stupid. You ask the Muslim why Allah wanna make your penis endless, he have no answer. You ask the Muslim why he is going to supply you with a huge number of vagina, he have no answer. What turn your God who is supposed to be holy according to you to be a pimp from Las Vegas? He have no answer. Why your God will supply you with boys in the heaven who according to you they will serve for eternity and they will be uh, <laughs> very pretty boys? He have no answer. Why your wife in the heaven her ass will be one mile? He have no answer. Why your penis will be endless and is going to be never go soft? He have no answer. I mean he he like only to supply you with his stupidity the second you ask him a question about his his his, his stupid cult he get offended and now we ask him isn't it your god who order the jews the jews specifically to take this land according to the quran he have no answer you see islam is wonderful religion as long as you don't question it Brother, Islam mean peace. You know, I challenge any Muslim to tell me where he got this life from. Islam mean peace. It's the opposite from the word peace. Islam, it means you or you know, you surrender to me. You you surrender. It's about war. This why Muhammad he sent letters to three kings saying, Aslam Taslam, surrender, you will be safe. So Islam is not the peace, it's the opposite. We Muslims, we know how to memorize the Quran, brother, but you cannot explain to us a verse in the Quran. You memorize it because Muhammad, he make it like a, like a, like a rap, stupid music, but doesn't make sense. Let me, okay, can you memorize this? I can tell you about uh, a commercial I used to hear when I was a kid. I remember it until now. So, does that mean the commercial is a, is a holy book? I mean, how stupid Muslims are. You memorize a book, but you cannot explain the book. I challenge any Muslim to call me right now, and I will show you the first word in the Quran. The first word was given to Muhammad. Uh, you will spend the coming 20 hours to make it accepted, and you will not be able. Just the first word, not the first sentence. This is a stupid religion. Now, who is a Muslim? He is a brave and he is sure that his religion is a true religion. He's going to call me. It's a top open. You see, the, the Muslims, they want to debate everybody. Anyone who don't speak Arabic, anyone who do not know Islam, anyone who don't have degrees in Islam, he is more than welcome to debate us about Islam. And me, the poor me, I cannot even find one Abdul to debate me. They are lined up to debate Christians who know nothing about Islam. Or those who knew some hadith, few hadith, and they keep repeating them. You know, like, uh, what is going to come with? I know everything he knew already. I heard it all. So who is going to call me? As you see, my Skype is in the screen, and I am waiting for you, Muslims. And trust me, I'm not going to insult you. I'm not here to insult. I'm not here to call names. 
This is what you Muslims do usually. I'm here to discuss with you, and you tell me if you are right, and let us see. Please don't forget to copy the link of our podcast and share it around on Facebook and etc. And it challenged the Muslim, tell them this is a guy, he claimed that nobody can debate him. There's a guy here, he claimed that Muslims has no answer. There's a person here, he claimed that Allah himself, he cannot answer him. Yeah, right. This guy, he don't have a mic. Have you ever heard of a Muslim don't have a mic? Welcome in my chat. Only in my chat, they don't have mic. And I am sure he don't have a speaker too. Yeah. I mean, you see, you are watching YouTube in your phone, but you don't have a mic. Mm -hmm. Your phone does not have a mic. I get that. All right. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Anyway, things happen, my friend. Look like the mic is stolen by Jibril, the, the pizza guy. You know, like if, even the stories of Islam is based in a guy, his name is Jibril. And who is Jibril? He used to come to Muhammad in the look of a guy. Obviously, he was the boyfriend of Muhammad. His name is Dahya Kilbi. The people didn't notice that there is a guy he keep coming to Muhammad and they knew him. They say, oh, Dahya was there late at night. What he was doing there, Muhammad? He said, no, this is not Dahya. He looked like Dahya, yes, exactly like him, yes. But this is the Anzil Zibril. So he cannot explain to them why this man and what he is doing late with him alone. So he said, this is Jibril. So if one day a beautiful woman she came to my house and you ask me second day if you are my neighbor hey the Christian appearance what this woman was doing late at your house yesterday I would tell you oh hold on mm, hold on hold on yes she is a beautiful uh, are you talking about the women with the short skirt the woman her breast is coming out ah uh, okay well this is really she is not really what do you think this is the angel wife Jibril this is the wife of the angel Jibril Even his angel story is dumb and stupid. Now, who is the Muslim is going to call me? Who is the brave Muslim is willing to call? Anyone? Hello? Yeah, he had okay. What about the okay? There's 1.4. The Muslim they keep saying to us, like, if you notice, by the way, uh, uh, you, you listen to the Muslims. One of you, one of them, he says to uh, we are 1.4 billion. The other one, he said, we are 1.6 billion. The other one, he said, we are 1.8 billion. I mean, are you chicken or eggs? What do you mean, one, four, six, eight? Next week's is going to be two billions. But we cannot find a guy who can refute us. They think they think if they increase the numbers by false fictions numbers that will make them like a true religion I mean are you stupid or what do you know how many people they smoke do you know that does not make them smart huh what's wrong with you and if this is about if it's about number the one is right is the more but by numbers we are almost a three going to four billions so is that make us the right and you are wrong just because we are more than you how dumb that is so who is the abdul is going to call me any abdul let us go to business as long the Abdul, the Abdul will not call anyway. I mean, forget about it. Or you, if you wait for the Abdul to do things, this is a nation is based on Insha Allah. Insha Allah, tomorrow we will free Zulaslim. Insha Allah, tomorrow uh, we are going to build the hospital. Insha Allah, tomorrow we are going to kill the Christians. Insha Allah, tomorrow we will take the Vatican. Insha'Allah, 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 and they cannot even make make a, 
you know even a Muslim if his wife isn't getting pregnant he blamed the Jews do you know that if his wife she is not getting pregnant he blamed the Jews all right this is the Quran in the front of us oh I'm typing in English hold on And you know, I have a message for all those left propaganda media who they are acting like dogs all over the, 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 the Israeli. You know, the, the Trump, he is seeking war and the Jews are asking for war. I mean, what are you talking about? Are you saying to me that because the Muslims will intimidate us by their violence, then we will let it go? Well, tomorrow they will ask you for Washington DC and your excuse will be oh okay we have to give it to them because they are going to do violence you see how stupid their mentality you see Islam is peace Islam is peace but because Islam is peace do you know in the media the, the left media that they say to you Muslims are not bad people and now because you did that a, a lot of people they will be killed like you just said they are not bad and you just said they are going to kill many people you just said they are peaceful and you just said that they are going to slaughter many how stupid this media is and you know what before Trump was born before you are born how many the Muslims killed when that when the last time you remember that the Muslim did not slaughter somebody and slaughter a big number of people where 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 we can find that in chapter 5 verse number 21 the Quran says And you can read a few verses before it, so most times will not say we are taking it out of uh, its meaning. According to the Quran, Allah He ordered the Jews to go and attack that land and kill whoever lived there. You believe it? So, if the Muslims are truthful, who they believe in their book, shouldn't they explain to us why their God Allah He made a stupid decision? To kill whoever lived there don't Allah knows that in the future those people will be Muslims do Allah knows that one day the Jews they will not let go and they will keep asking for their land why Allah is ordering the Jews to, to kill whoever lived there and why he is saying to them that this is a land it was assigned to you and why he is current holy land this land was holy land because of what? Any Muslim can't tell us? You know, I, I want to show you something very funny about, about the Muslims. I like the Muslims. Any Muslim there? Let me show you something funny about the Muslims. Let me open, open Google Earth. <clears throat> All right. Okay. We are here in Mecca. I'm going to tell you a story. I hope if you have a if you have a hard problem and you don't like comedy and comedy can hurt you please leave okay or put some something in your ears according to the Muslims once upon the time should we start the story Muslims are you listening and I challenge any Muslim to tell me this is not a true I challenge any Muslim to tell me that what I am going to say is not true it's a challenge You see how covered they are? They were not there to challenge me. Sit down, Muslims. Are you ready, Muslim, to listen to the bedtime story? 
<laughs> Wonderful. You are very cute like this. Okay, are you going to burn cars tomorrow? Allah. All right, all right. Are you going to kill some Jews? Allah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. How many, how many Christian and Jews you are planning to kill? Now I believe that you are Muslim because you don't you have no idea what are you talking about, but you just say uh huh. Now according to the Muslim truthful story, I mean this is truthful story, and take a note about the word truthful. Alright? I like truthful stories all my life. Since I was a kid at the age of 40, where Muhammad he became a prophet of God. I mean, Muhammad took him 40 years for Allah to make him ready to be a prophet. And it take Jesus, according to the Quran, one second to be a prophet. Look like the processor of Muhammad was so slow. But yet Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. Let that go. Let that go. I mean, come on. Don't make it hard. According to the Muslims, the Abdul story, take a note, not my story. And I challenge any Muslim to say it's not true. Allah, he sent Adam to India. Where? Where? where, where? In India. And then Allah, after he sent Adam to India, he told him, I want you to go and do Hajj. Allah told Adam, told Allah, where, where I'm going to go to Hajj? Okay, let me tell you the story. Somebody is saying, my your English is funny. Okay, I'm going to speak to you in Islamic uh, Islamic uh, accent. All right, my friend. Brother Sister, our blood God Allah. He sent Prophet Adam, be of him, to India. And as you know, I love India. I love curry. So when Allah, he sent Adam to India, Adam at that time, he was Indian. This is the only passport he carry. So Allah told Adam, Brother Adam, I want you to go and do Hadd. Adam was like, go Hadd where? Las Vegas? Toronto? Kashmir, he was thinking about all names they can come to his mind. Then Allah told him, No, you go to Mecca. In Mecca, you will find a stone. I left a stone there, it's a marked stone. So, Prophet Adam, he did take his donkey and he went all the way across the sea. And it's very normal at that time to cross the sea using your donkey. You can ask about it. So he crossed the sea using his donkey and he arrived all the way to Mecca. He did not need ZBS. He did not need any map, brother. It was very easy because Allah, peace upon him, he guided him. And when brother Adam, Prophet Adam, peace upon him, he arrived to Mecca, he found 40,000 angels waiting for him. And the angels, they said to him, Prophet Adam, we are here and we did had already 40 years, 40 times before you. Like, wow, I mean, this is history. This is science. So Adam was an Indian guy. And then Allah told him, go and do Hajj. I question Muslims, why Allah did land Adam in India? Why he did not land him? I mean, is, how, how Adam came here? You see, let, let me let me measure the distance between uh, between uh, uh, India and Mecca. Now hold on. Oh, let us say Adam he came from this area. All right, and this is Mecca. Okay, straight line, straight line. This is what? This is a straight line crossing even the sea, huh? walking over the sea. <laughs> it's more than. A thousand and two or, or three hundred mile a thousand three hundred miles to do Hajj and then Allah he sent Eve anyone remember where Allah he sent Eve anyone remember 
where Allah he sent Eve. Nobody remember? Let us see if any of you have a good memory. Yeah, he sent he sent Eve to Yemen. Thank you, Philip. So, guys, imagine, imagine, brothers, sisters, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Allah, He sent Adam here and Eve here. I mean, what kind of a story this story is? Okay, question: How Adam after that and Eve they met together again? Huh? At that time, there is no cell phone, there is no GPS, there is no. Where are you? Hello, my lovely wife Eve. Are you there? How they met again? There is only Adam and Eve in the whole world. How Adam he met with Eve? I mean, and why Allah he sent Eve to Yemen, man? How many years took them to, to to meet each other or like okay it looked like maybe muslims maybe uh, eve she went in this direction first and then adam he went to china japan indonesia Chechnya, uh, russia uh, europe he was looking all over and he he do you know what adam he do i think at the time of adam adam used to do it the same as uh, <laughs> he used to piss and then eve she sniff oh adam was here my beautiful husband who was here I know it from his piss <laughs> mashallah alhamdulillah his piss is unique not like other men what other men there's only one man in the earth yet but there's no man so obviously the geography of Islam is beyond imagination now Allah he sent Adam to earth and he is location he it was in India. This is why, if you notice, the first Indian when he talk, uh, the first uh, the first Adam when he talk, he used to shake his head. You know, I love the Indian people. Well, don't take don't take me wrong. I'm not making fun of them, but this is their culture. Like when they talk, they shake their head. So obviously, Adam, the first human, he was Indian, and obviously he was shaking his head. And if you ask Adam what you ate for today, he said curry. Are you sure? Yes, curry. All right. So now Adam he have to make Hajj and according to Islamic source Adam he did Hajj 40 times like look what this is story I mean this is very exciting so now we have Adam let us zoom in a little bit oh Lord have mercy I mean, this is a pure science, what we can say. This is a pure geography. Excuse moi. See, I speak French. All right. So Adam, he was landed here. Huh? All right. And Mecca is here. And now he have a duty to do Hajj every year. According to Muslim resource, it says that he did 40 time Hajj. 40 time Hajj. Okay. 40 time Hajj. Question, Muslims, question. I mean, why this guy, Adam, don't go and sit here and that's it. Why he come back and go back and go back and come back? At that time, there is no citizenship and there is no papers. And just, okay, it's important to go around this stone and kiss the stone and do hajj and touch the stone huh? and then wipe your ass with it. And why he go back to India? Anyone can tell me? As long it is a must for him, Allah He order him to do Hajj. Why this poor guy? He have to cross all the ocean and go around many countries. I mean, in the old days, this will take a century to go from here to here, my friend. Now I am putting the dot here, you know, because we do not know exactly where is uh, where Adam was located. Now there is some stories. Some they say in Mumbai, some they say in Kashmir. 
some they say I don't know I mean like you Muslims have tons of stories but whatever you make it it's a long journey especially at that time we have you know there is no boat this is the first man it was the first man he don't even have shoes do we have shoes Muslims do you think Adam when he landed on earth he have shoes the first man on earth how he was able to find the location of Mecca any Abdul do we have any Muslim in the chat and by the way this is a very logical story and let me tell you a story this is a true story brother true story uh, I, one of my grandfathers the Arab as you know I am an Arab one of my grandfather he used to have a flying carpet and once uh, we rented our flank uh, flank uh, fr frying carpet the frying carpet it's not the flying the frying carpet uh, we rented to a foreigner the foreigner he fly with the flying carpet he never come back he thought he can get away with it so we order the flying carpet to come back and the carpet now it's coming in the way it, you know like it's I think now it is uh, in the border but you know it's a neighbor country in the border between Brazil and uh, Saudi Arabia can a Muslim give us any story makes sense so when a Muslim he the reason I'm telling you about all of this when a Muslim he tell you about Jerusalem and our land I mean Muslims are very sincere in their stories there's no lies all their stories is absolutely accurate and then if you ask yourself why the Muslims they want Jerusalem what they have to do with Jerusalem they will say to you the prophet be upon him he flee in the top of a flying donkey and he went to Jerusalem like what the heck anyone saw him anyone saw him going there no there's no witnesses according to the story of Muhammad uh, what a story all right let us go to Jerusalem this is Jerusalem my friend okay let us land there let us land on uh, the Aqsa which is the temple the Mount Temple it's not the Aqsa really it's not the Muslim this is a lie okay where is the Aqsa I cannot see the Aqsa I think here maybe let's see uh, no this is a stadium okay hold on All right, here we go. According to the story of Muhammad, Allah, he sent Muhammad a flying donkey. All right. Uh, look like there's no Google uh, recording here. So we will land here. Okay, let us land here. close to the you see this is the mount where the muslims they build a mosque in the top of it all right so according to the muslims allah he sent muhammad in the top of a flying mule and he landed here and there was 124000 prophets waiting for him and each one of them he have a flying donkey with him which means at that moment there's 124,000 donkeys in this area exactly yet not even single historian register for us that they one day suddenly so 124,000 donkey <laughs> uh, in Jerusalem 124,000 donkeys 
appear in one day in a small city like this? Oh well. All right, all right. I mean, come on. There's a flying donkey. We see them everywhere. Don't you see Obama? He was a flying the other day. Hold on. So, uh, 124,000 profit and 124,000 donkey. So, if we say every donkey, he need he need. Uh, let us say four foot by two foot width. Can somebody calculate for me how much space the donkeys alone will take? So we have 120,000 profit, 124,000 donkey. This is the total, like you know, the donkey he will take a space of a three men or four men in the in the ground. I mean, right? Let us say they are standing, not sitting, huh? So this is this is like a total of uh, uh, almost seven uh, seven hundred thousand human beings, and nobody noticed them. Not even one historian, not the Christian, not the Jews, not the Roman. Nobody saw the one hundred twenty. I mean, is it normal to suddenly to see in one town, in one temple, in the yard of the temple, one hundred twenty twenty four thousand donkey? And nobody mentioned it and not only that when Muhammad he flee in the top of his lion donkey nobody saw him too not even his wife and that is telling us that Muslims when they tell stories about flying donkeys and flying a mule I mean it must be true so all the story about Jerusalem, the Muslim they claim that this is their their city just because their prophet said that he fly in the night. Actually, you know what? If we go in the Quran, we will not find one verse saying that Muhammad he fly to Jerusalem. You believe it? Do you believe it? Who is a Muslim want to challenge me about that? Who is a Muslim want to challenge me about that? Nowhere in the Quran says that the Quran says praise be to Allah the one who made his uh, slave visit Jerusalem That's it. Who is the slave? We do not know how he visit. We do not know <laughs> Any uh, Any Muslim can tell us Hello Hello The intelligence of Muslims is beyond imagination. This is why I challenge you all of you together to bring me one smart Muslim. That it actually this is where the movie you know there's a more famous movie is called Mission Impossible. This is where the movie name is coming from. It is a mission impossible. Muslims they lie. Muslim they say stupid things. Muslim they try to play games. Yes. But a smart Muslim, it's impossible. They can take about my mother. What about my mother? Say whatever you want to say about my mother. They don't even know who is my mother. But I can speak about the mother of Muhammad. According to Muhammad, Muhammad in the Quran, he said, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكِينَ najis." Muhammad said, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكِينَ Najis. What does that mean? The mother of Muhammad is filthy. Muhammad saying that about his mother. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu innama al-mushrikuna najis fala yaqrabu al-masjid al-haram. Muhammad, he said clearly from his own mouth and the mouth of his God that his mother and his father they are filthy. So he is a son of a filthy father and the son of a filthy mother. I'm not the one who's insulting his mother, it is him. Any Abdul? Any Abdul can say it is not true? 
I can even show you that your Muhammad he said that my father and your father in hellfire and not only that I can prove to you from the hadith of Muhammad that Muhammad himself is a son of the devil who want to challenge me huh The son of the devil literally according to Muhammad. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything Don't think I'm insulting Muhammad. I'm not saying that I am just saying what the Muslims believe Hello I remember a smart Muslim he used to come to a chat room in Arabic and You know, it's a huge room like this is a chat room in pal talk uh, this guy he always come to the mic and he say hey Christians all of you are sons of the devil sons of Satan The admin of the room he said to me. Can you please do something? I don't know what answer I mean each time he come here. He said he repeat the same thing So do you know what he's talking about? He can, I'm sure you can answer him So he asked me I said, that's not my you know, it's you are the admin come on He said please 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 take take the mic and talk to him. So I took the mic. So I said to the Abdul Hey Abdul why we are the sons of the devils according to you I know what he's talking about but I want I want you to I want him to say it so he said because the prophet peace upon him he said that if a Muslim or a man he did not say the name of Allah and he prays Allah before he have intercourse with his wife the Satan will wrap himself around the penis of the man and he will do the mother and you are going to be the son of the Shaitan yes Shaitan <laughs> So I said to him, are you sure this is a Sahih Hadith, not a weak Hadith? He said, it's a finish. I'm very sure. I asked him again, are you sure it is Sahih? It might be weak, my friend. He said, no, no, it is Sahih. I gave him the mic again. I said, are you sure? Can, can, can you confirm that? He said, I told you many times. What's wrong with you? Are you stupid? It is Sahih. So I said to him, well, based on this, as long the one who don't say the prayer for Allah before he have intercourse with his wife, the shaitan will do the women and the son will be the son of the devil based on this your prophet himself is the son of the devil because your prophet father and his mother both don't believe in Allah the Muslim is start he took the mic he said may Allah curse you <laughs> yeah, may Allah destroy you may Allah make a train go over you may Allah break your fan <laughs> what's wrong with you Abdul after that, he never ever said that statement that we are the sons of the shaitan. This is how stupid, dumb they are. And this is why I'm saying to you, I challenge you to bring me a smart Muslim. Oh. Really, I insulted your religion. Look, how, look at this filthy, this filthy uh, uh, dump there. He is a person who call us najis, which means we are filthy and clean. You see the Muslim? This is the Muslim translation. Huh? Look what your Quran call us, Abdul. So if we call you najis, are you insulted? How come you can insult us, but we cannot return the insult to you? Oh, you have a holy ass. Ah, this is why when you die, they put a big piece of fabric in your anus. Do you know, guys, when the Muslim die, they they push a big piece of cotton and fabric in his anus? Do you know that? Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why they push a fabric in his anus? Yeah, it's a bug, but blood, but why? No, 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 because Muhammad he told them, You guys are not learning now. What I can do? I'm, I'm very disappointed. There's 99 dragons in the grave. You forget about the punishment of the grave. How many times we play the video? Like, you go right now and search for the punishment of the grave. There's 99 videos, videos. Somebody make some tea for me or coffee. There's 99 dragons. Every dragon have seven heads. Some they say nine heads. 
all of those they will go inside the anus of the Abdul and if you read Quran brother if you read Quran all your life that will protect your anus look at the Quran man the Quran is the defense system for your anus you don't read Quran 99 dragons will go inside your ass I mean this is science this is rocket science <laughs> Unbelievable true story any Muslim here. He will say I am lying Anyone hmm? Anyone look at them look look, you know they get offended and he's insulting us a bunch of I mean look at them They don't okay call me call me and say to me. I challenge you show me I challenge you to I you are a liar Who is a Muslim when I call me and say you are a liar show me where you get this from? You save your question for later, please. We are concentrating now in the in the 99 dragons in the anus of the Muslim. This is very important for the ass of Muslims. The ass of Muslims is very important. You see the Israeli are kicking their ass for the last, what, 70, 80 years? Huh? But still the ass of the Muslims are protected by the Quran. Can you have do What a stupid religion. Today I made a video. I don't know how many of you guys you saw it. Did you see the video, the previous video? The Muslim, they made a threat. Let me let me look for the news again. Hold on. They made a threat that they are going to wage war in America. What? what? They are going to wage brother war on America. How? Okay, brother, how we are going to wage war in America? The head of the pharmacies in all Egypt and all the Arabian countries, not only in Egypt, I found that he is the head of all of them. He is, he will send a memo to all pharmacies in the Arabian countries to stop buying Viagra. <laughs> oh boy. I know I know you might think I am joking I am not I am not my friend let me let me uh, find the news hold on Unbelievable. And what we can say about that? What we can say about that? You know, I mean, uh, okay, let's see. You see, I don't see it in English, so I'm going to go to the Arabic one, the search in Arabic. For some reason, I don't see anyone in any English news is talking about it, even though I saw it all over <coughs> in Arabic, but it's not appearing in English. All right. Agora. Amazing. All right. Here we go. I mean, you cannot open. You cannot open a Muslim website without flooding you with advertising. It's impossible. Hold on. <clears throat> uh. 
Uh, anyway, uh, I made a I made a video about it. Uh, let's see here. There's many websites, Islamic news website, talking about this. But I cannot find uh, the one with the video. Hmm. Yeah. I think I need to uh, change the search. I think you know what? I think I have it. I have it in the other website, the link. I think I have it there. Yeah. I need to go to that web that uh, that page. Let me see. Yeah, because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say something without proving it. Because some, you know, they might say, "Oh, he's making things up." You know, you know the Abdul. You know the Abdul. They look for excuse. There we go. I copy it from the other link. There we go. This is the head of the pharmacies in all the Middle East, supposedly. Uh, by the Islamic uh, or the Arab, uh, whatever they call it, cancel, whatever you know. So he is the he is the top doctor. His name Doctor Abdul Rahman. Uh, what? No, oh, hold on. Uh, uh, doctor Doctor Muhi uh, Ubaid. All right. He he said, "We are going to hit them badly with the Viagra." What he's talking about, the Muslims, they will be caught the Viagra of America. And he said, in Egypt alone, we spend in the last six months, six months only, 450 million for Viagra. Oof. Mean. And look, this, uh, uh, this uh, woman host, she is saying 450 million for Viagra. And you are asking us why we Muslim women, we like to date foreigners? I mean, what's wrong with those men in that country? Why they need 450 million dollars for Viagra? He said more than a million, one billion and a half spent in the Middle East for Viagra. And now he's saying, imagine if we stop buying Viagra immediately. I mean, obviously, Trump himself is going to be, like we say, please, please stop having sex, please. Please. Please don't do that. The American now, like the Marines of USA, the Marines are really in fear now. Oh, what, what, what Trump he did. The Muslim, they will stop taking Viagra. Like, are you kidding me? No way, we cannot let that happen. So now, after the Muslim, they stop taking Viagra, the 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 uh, uh, Trump right away he will cancel his decision. I mean, what do you what do you want more dangerous action more than this? Video نقيب الصيادلة عن مقاطعة الأدوية الأمريكية حنضربهم في الفياجرا. And this is the link for like the one who like to laugh. And this is in TV. And now the Muslims, they have a hashtag. We caught the American Viagara. Allahu Akbar. I mean, science. Action. And trust me, not even one of them, he will stop buying Viagra. 
you see if you are asking them to stop reading books okay they will stop reading books because most of them they don't read books anyway but Viagra it's impossible are you kidding me that is the last thing a Muslim will stop doing go and search right now in Google it says that number one people who search for porn are Muslims how dare you to say that imagine you say to the Muslims we are going to be cut the American porn it's impossible the porn which is made in the filthy hello would right so they are number one customers and they say to you do you know the the, the most of porn is coming from America <laughs> oh boy. now we go back to the topic do we have any smart Muslim I hope I'm not insulting you Muslims when I say smart please forgive me please I don't mean it I mean seriously I don't mean it I hope you are not offended and you are not insulted for saying a smart Muslim anyone who is a smart Muslim is willing to call me I mean this people they get insult whatever you say you say stupid Muslim they get insulted you say smart Muslim they will not call anyway anything you do they get insulted you know I, rem I remember once I wanted to uh, uh, to buy hummus you know hummus hummus so in the grocery store they make hummus for you it was a mistake to buy I, after that I never bought hummus from the grocery store ever anyway so uh, you know uh, my cousins they have they have visitors and uh, his mother she sent me and him uh, to buy some hummus all right so we went to the grocery store to buy hummus uh, you know in, in 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 all days they don't have a machine to you know to mash the hummus so they they make it by hand you know I don't know what they call it what they what they call it in English the one you use to mash things like you know so anyway so when when this guy was doing the hummus a fly fell down in the hummus what happened a fly fell down in the hummus so me and my cousin we jump when we said to him there's a fly there's a fly he said where it is where where he he smash it it's gone no, we where where he keep going where 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 <laughs> so we told him okay we don't want to buy thank you bye bye so before we leave there was a right away a guy he came he said give me a kilo hummus kilogram of hummus he, he gave him the one he was giving to us and it's full and mashed with the fly like where is the fly where they don't see it however if you think a fly fitting in the soup or a food is disgusting this guy he did not do anything wrong because according to the wisdom of the Prophet if a fly fail into your soup dig it dig it dig it and then drink it I'm not making things up I mean you can, there's no way no way the Muslim is not a smart uh, let me show you Oof, man look at this look at this let me show you the other one look at this wisdom oof, oof, oof. Oof, oof, oof. okay this is better this is Sahih al-Bukhari so the Muslim they will not say you are making things up all right The prophet said what, what who is the one is talking Muslims who is the one is talking be honest who is the one is talking Muhammad your prophet so this is a pure wisdom and you know Muhammad he don't speak from his own all of this wisdom is coming from Allah you know what I mean So your prophet said if a fly fall into your soup what do you do as a Muslim 
Are you listening, Muslims? <laughs> All right. Okay. Take a note. When the fly fell down into your soup, you don't just take it out and throw it out or don't ever throw your soup. Are you listening, Muslims? <laughs> Wonderful. Alhamdulillah. So what we do if a fly fell into the soup? We take the fly and we dip it inside the soup. What we do? We dip it inside the soup. Are you listening, Muslims? <laughs> now, why we dip the fly inside the soup? According to National Geographic Channel, which is located in Mecca and run by the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, he said, for one of its wings has a disease. one of its wings has a disease and the other one has a cure for the disease are you amused with this speech muslims <laughs> i am amused too this is an amazing discovery and let me tell you another additional story there's a video you can find it in uh, what it's called this uh, memory TV the translate Muslim videos you can search for it uh, you know the Muslims always they fabricate stories and the purpose is legitimate because it's in Islam it is it is lawful to fabricate and to lie in order to make people to believe it's okay so look what he said the Catholic Church in Germany and it who the Catholic Church take a note the Catholic Church in Germany they hired two doctors. Okay, let me draw the story here. It's a cartoon. So what they did, those Catholic uh, churches, they got two Christian doctors. Okay, this is doctor number one. And this is doctor number two. They told doctor number one and doctor number two, we want you to make a study about the fly. Who has two wings? And we want you to prove that this hadith is false. So those two doctor donkeys, I mean, sorry, uh, the smart donkey uh, doctors, uh, uh, they they start studying the fly, and took them a couple of years. And then they came with the, the astonishing discovery that what the prophet said is it true that one of the wings have a disease and the other wing have a cure for the disease. And not only that, according to the discovery that this is, can be a solution for many diseases. Now they went to the Catholic Church and they said to them, hey, Catholic, we found that the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, he told the truth. So the Catholic Church, they told them, don't please, please don't tell anyone. Please don't tell anyone. Hide the secret. Please don't tell anyone. Because if the Catholic, they knew this, they will convert to Islam. And they paid them a lot of money. And now those two doctors, they get paid. However, there is... Uh, a big medical company heard about the discovery and it's called Bayer, Bayer Company. And they bought this discovery from those science, scientists and now they are using this discovery to fight AIDS. And this is the only cure exists for AIDS. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I don't know what to say. This is the sound of a brain of Abdul was just jumping in the floor. 
if you don't believe me I can find you the video any Muslim don't believe that this is a true video made by Muslims just to show you how much do they have madness and they have no dignity and they lie now as long as this is a secret how this Abdul who live in Egypt he found about it it's a secret top secret man anyway you know maybe the angel Jibreel he told them you know or what do you think about the story of the Pope who converted to Islam look at this once in the chat room but this is an old story at that time I have no I wish I have a recording program at that time that would be hilarious there is a big room big room full of Muslims like hundreds and like what's happening here you know and there was a guy telling a story about the Pope how he converted to Islam the Pope which Pope is that you know and this Pope is an Arab <laughs> All right. True story. Come on, just show respect, please. Come on, so respect, so respect. All right. Now the guy he continued the story and the Muslims in the text, guys. If you see the text in the in the chat room, the chat room is going crazy. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. How this happy, amazing, beautiful. Now the Pope is in the chat room himself. They gave him the mic to tell the story, but he was shy. And he's an Arab so the other guy he told them please take the mic and tell us how this happened so this is what happened this guy the, the this Pope I, I never heard of how any Pope was an Arab ever ever for the Catholic Church so uh, he said that once I used went to pray to Allah I used to lock my door so nobody see me and they noticed that so once they break the door and they get in or like they open the door violently so they can get in and they saw me praying like a Muslim so they discovered that I became a Muslim so they jail me inside the room and every day they take me outside to the yard and they bring 12 lion 12 what 12 lion and they order the lions to beat me and lash me with their tails I mean, do you see how how bad the Catholic, my friend? Eesh. Disgusting. So twelve lions, and those lions, each time they strip him from his clothes, and they the, the, they they order the lions to turn their ass to the guy, and they lash him with his with their tails. I mean, this is a harmful punishment, man. The lions don't eat him; they just beat him with their tails. Eesh, man, that's something. It's like. Uh, Oh. anyway anyway and then they jail him inside his room and they don't allow him to speak to anyone and Allah inspire him so he opened the twilight seat and he went inside the sewage and he dig inside the sewage and he went out from the other side and he found himself in Egypt story I mean this is a true story and guys not even one Muslim in the chat room he even in text ask him how you can get inside the sewage all the way to Europe uh, to, to, to Egypt do you know uh, guys do you know the distance between Italy the Vatican and Egypt somebody he go inside the sewage and he appear Sewage in Italy in the Vatican and he appeared in the second in the other side. He found himself in Egypt. Praise be to Allah. Allah Akbar. I mean, obviously, it is a true story. Any Muslim? Everything the Muslim they say is a true story. Hmm?
I never saw a nation or religion is so stupid and so filthy and lies is part is a serious part of their cult as Islam never never you will never find any cult like this do we have any Abdul you know I, I just uh, uh, downloaded the application to apply for visa uh, to China I mean why I want to do that I just go in my uh, bathroom jump in the sewage and appear in China I'm serious I mean what look how easy it is there's no need for airplane there's no need for I mean just get, you know uh, come on man just do it look how easy it is oh oh where is the app let me see if there's any option in the app uh, let me see if there's an option in the app it says enter the sewage line etc etc or I'm, I'm looking hold on yeah here we go you see this is the Chinese uh, because you know as an American you cannot enter China unless uh, uh, unless you are uh, applying in advance all right okay so you have to enter my friend you have so uh, let me see anyone you know like it's in English and you know but I don't see anywhere where it says like if you enter the sewage you can appear in this in the other side in Beijing do you think that is possible huh any Muslim think that this is possible So this guy he went in the sewage in Italy and in the Vatican by the way the Vatican is not next to the sea so in the in the sewage of the Vatican he find himself in the in Cairo I'm not going to submit this application I was saying to myself this is a lot of things I need to fill and last time it was easier I don't know like they too many things I need to fill here and they are asking me how many wives I have how many wives are going with me? I, what, how, how I can put all my wives there? We have only an option for uh, one wife. Where? What about the rest? What if I'm a Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Huh? Unbelievable. Do we have any Muslim here? Prophet Muhammad was illiterate, yet know more about histories and previous prophet than the Jews. Okay, oh, I challenge you, Murduki, what's his name? Mur Murtaki. Tell me about the history of your prophet. He told us about the previous prophet. I'm going to help you. Guys, look what this guy, he said. Hold on, hold on. I like it when a Muslim he's he speak about his prophet. I mean it's a challenging. Look, look what this guy he said. Focus, focus with me, focus, focus. All right. Prophet Muhammad was illiterate, yet no more about histories of the previous prophet than the Jews and the Christians of his time. Oof. Oof. I mean that's deep. And you know what? You Krish, this is very embarrassing too. This is very embarrassing. This guy, he just hit you in the eye. Uh, I will help you. And show you something the Prophet of Islam, he only knows. Do you remember, guys, when Iraq stole uh, 
the close of Musa's? I mean, who knows this history except Muhammad? Hello? Obviously, Muhammad must be a prophet because nobody knows this history. The prophet Moses, he have a unique story and nobody knows about it. Save the prophet of Allah. If, 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 if. I mean, this guy, he destroyed all the argument, the argument of a Christian prince. Christian prince now is disabled. All right. Let us show you the story of Moses. The prophet said, the people of Bani Israel, which means the Jews, the children of Israel, used to take a bath naked together. Eesh, eesh, eesh. Look, even Muhammad, he knew how they used to take a bath. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, so lovely. I mean, Muhammad, he knew even what they do in their bathroom. Group bath, group, group, group bath. Okay. And now, look what happened here. The Prophet Musa used to take a bath alone. If, if, if Muhammad, he knew even that detail. That they take a group bath, he take a lone bath. How do he know? How do he know? Come on, think about it. It must be Allah. They said, Allah by Allah. The Jews are swearing by Allah. I, I heard that Taniyahu saying by Allah too. Okay. Nothing prevent Musa from taking a bath with us except that he has a scrotal herina. Musa, Prophet Musa, he had STD. Abdul, Prophet Musa, bees upon him. The Muslim Musa, he had STD, brother. Are you serious? Where is the Abdul? Where is the Abdul? The one who took. Where is where is the guy? Is he dead? Is he playing dead now? Prophet Musa, he have a sexual disease. The Jews, they are accusing their prophet that he have STD. Heria is not a STD. Uh, okay, well, the, in Arabic, it is STD. <laughs> and actually, I think it is, you know, in Arabic, I don't know the translation, but this is an STD. This is a sexual disease. So Musa's brother, according to the Prophet Muhammad, was accused by the Zeus that he have uh, inflammation in his testicles and he have a problem. He have red dot there, red uh, yellow. He have something wrong there. All right. And look what Allah did. Are you there, Abdul? Are you there? The Abdul who said uh, the Prophet he knew history. Guys, look what Allah did. Oof, oof. That's deep. That is seriously deep. So once, hold on, hold on. Muslims, are you listening with me? Hello, are you listening, Muslims? Okay, do you see where it says? So once, aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So those things happen once in history, never happen again. Yet the Prophet Muhammad he knew about it. Isn't it amazing that the Prophet Muhammad he knew even about the history of the testicles of the Prophet Musa? Allah. How you think the Prophet he discovered the history of the Prophet Musa? That's the clear answer from Muslims because Muslims have no answer. They keep saying Alhamdulillah. Thank you. So listen what happened, brother. So once Musa went, hold on, hold on, I cannot play this. I, I mean, I need, I need the background music. I cannot do that. This is serious. 
and you guys are not helping me I mean I need I need some romantic here some romance and you guys are just uh, not giving me uh, uh, turn the light off please yeah put the candles put the candles it's a miracle this is a miracle of Allah yeah, thank you thank you for putting the candles once upon the time there was a prophet, his name is Moses. And he used to take a bath alone. And they, they, the ugly Jews, they said, we swear by Allah, he is tested because have a problem. Imagine brothers and sisters, they are inspecting that the prophet Moses testicles have a problem. And the Prophet Moses' testicles is very healthy, and they are so big. Commercial break. If you like to be caught America, please stop buying a Viagra. A Viagra is the only way to fight America. We as Muslims, we need a Viagra badly, but Jerusalem deserves our sacrifice. Thank you. Back to the topic. So once upon the time, when the Prophet Moses decided to take a bath, and he put his clothes over a stone. And that's very logical to put your clothes over a stone. You would not put it in the sand. He is doing the right thing. And Allah knows about it. And it was the plan of Allah. And Allah, he made the stone run away. Commercial break, thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, if you want to return in Jerusalem, we need to find that rock. Because all what we need to do, we can make Netanyahu put the key of the city over that rock and the rock will run toward the Muslims. Thank you very much. End of the commercial. We go back to the topic. And then when Moses, he put his clothes over the stone, the stone start running away with his clothes and his iPhone X, which you know how expensive it is. And Moses, because he's a Jew, he cannot afford to lose money. He starts chasing the stone. And he will start saying and screaming, My clothes, my clothes. Oh stone, oh stone. Commercial break. This is one of the reasons we as a Muslims from Palestine, we use stones to throw it at the Jews. Because this is a clear sign from the Prophet and the God Allah to, clear, to use a stone against the Jews to prove them wrong. So brothers and sisters, if you like to buy stones, call us at our phone number 1-800-STONES-MADE-BY-ALLAH The end of the commercial. We go back to the topic. <laughs> He started chasing the stone and he was screaming and you know how bad his screaming was he's a Jew I mean seriously he is a literally Jew and when a Jew he says my clothes my clothes the whole world listen because they control the media brother CNN in their hand Fox news all the news media was saying my clothes my clothes Oh stone, oh stone, my clothes, my clothes, oh stone, oh stone. Commercial break. Brothers and sisters, we increase our numbers by using halal condoms. Halal condoms are the best Islamic condoms made in Israel. 
thank you very much and made by an Israeli manufacturer this is why they are trustworthy they are not Islamic condoms really but we have halal sticker on them thank you very much back to the topic <laughs> And then, while Prophet Moses is chasing the stone, he keep going, keep going, till the stone reach the middle of Jerusalem. And the Prophet Moses is totally naked, totally naked. I mean, seriously, totally naked. And then every single Jew was looking at his testicles every single jewish woman she was praising allah and they said they said to themselves by allah by allah moses have no defect in his testicles can we take commercial break or and later okay so guys as you see this is a clear proof that the prophet he knew history and by the way all those history was unknown for the infidels, for the Christians, for the Jews, for the Hindus, for the Buddhas, until the Prophet, he uncovered it. Oof. Oof. First of all, I am so happy that Allah he made Moses run so naked in the street so he can prove that his testicles they say he is a uh... you know the, the Muslim they say to us oh do you know that there's a prophet in the Old Testament he was naked for many years Abdul he was naked in the desert there's nobody <laughs> how stupid you are are you stupid or what if I am living in a place there's nobody there and I am naked what the difference will make stupid dump here we have a Muslim prophet Allah wanted to prove that the testicles of the prophet Musa's are very healthy so what he did what he did Muslim was what he did oh, look guys look at Allah how smart he is he was thinking this is deep this is seriously deep I think it took Allah a lot of time to think about it okay let us analyze the information in this story. I will teach you how to analyze the wisdom of Allah. All right? Please grab your pen. Don't grab your testicles. Even though the testicles is, is the main issue here, don't grab them. Grab the pen, please. Everybody, look at this. So now we have two factors in this story. Number one, we have the factor of letter T which is the testicles of Prophet Moses. We have another factor, which is letter C, which is the disease Prophet testicles uh, was accused to be uh, uh, having. The third testicle, uh, sorry, the, the third factor, it was the rock. The what? The rock. The fourth factor in this story is the Jews. And they are a bigger crowd. Allahu Akbar. So Allah, he put all those factors together to make a wonderful story and a wonderful miracle and resistance by history. Actually, there's many historian, Greek historian, Japanese historian, like I know a historian. His name is Sazumi Sazumi Yako Sasumi Honda. He said that TSRG is a code only was discovered by Allah, which is the testicles and the scortal and the rock and the Jews. Allah wanted to prove to us that the testicles of the Prophet Moses are healthy. So what he did, he needed a rock. So he placed a rock in the beach. By the way, if you go in that area, there is no rocks in the beach, except that rock. 
because Allah, he wanted to be sure that he is going to put his wallet and his clothes over this remote control rock. So when Moses says he put his clothes over that rock because there's no other choice anyway. <laughs> this is the only rock, as you see. So he put his clothes over the rock. Allah, he ordered the rock to run. Moses, he was taking a shower. And when you take a shower, you should not get attention for what's happening in the beach. But Allah, he whispered in his ears. He said to him, your wallet, your phone, they are gone. Look behind you. Moses looked behind him and he found the rock is running away. So he started screaming, chasing the rock, saying, my clothes, my old stone. By the way, do you think he was calling the stone to stop? Looked like it. But this stone is an Islamic stone. They are the first to run from the Jews. As you see here in this case, this is a Jewish prophet. He is chasing a Muslim stone. My clothes, O stone, my clothes, O stone. Until he arrived to the Jews. The Jews, their eyes was like, what? Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is so big and so healthy. And they could not believe how healthy the testicles of the Prophet Moses. Everybody was astonished. And you know, Moses. His testicles are so big and healthy, yes, but take a note. There's no bigger testicles than the Prophet Muhammad testicles at the end of the day. <laughs> I don't know, I hear a sound, somebody is laughing. Is that a Jibreel or something? What is the guy who spoke about history? This is history? What is the Abdul? The, the Abdul, he told us, Muhammad, he knew about history. Here we go, this is history. Anyone? Do you want to tell us something else? The Muslim they played dead, you know. Like, where is that? Where is what happened to the guy? Who is a Muslim when I when I, when I call me right now and tell me about the history of the Prophet? He said, "Oh, do you want to tell you about the history of the camel who is born from a rock?" As long as we are talking about rocks, camel, a rock she gave birth to camel. Eesh, eesh. And the camel was a she camel. And not only she was a she camel, she was a breadnet with 10 month camel. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is so beautiful. Any Abdul? Don't ask me why the Quran is false. The Quran is not false, it's full of cartoon stories. Don't you like cartoon? <laughs> All those stories are proven by Zayans. Muslims, Christian Prince is inviting you to his school. Who is the brave is willing to examine the, examine the teacher. Anyone? Who want to give me a call? Who is a Muslim? He have the courage and the knowledge to give me a call. I mean, Yesterday, if you remember, we mentioned to you the story of uh, the Prophet. He is warning the Muslims, if you put your head up before the leader of the prayer, finish his prayer, Allah will make your head the head of a donkey. Many of you did not believe in that, which is not right. Proving by science that the majority of Muslims, they are suffering from that illness. Most of them, they have a head of a donkey. And if you say no, obviously the Muslims are accusing their prophet to lie.
because I cannot find one Muslim he did not even once in his lifetime did not raise his head before the Imam finished the prayer because how you will know he's finished the prayer or not if he is his head is down and your head is down how you want to know if he is finished or not unless you raise your head first hello and by the way I find that this is was a kind of a prophecy about the Prophet he is a prophesying about every single Muslim I want Muslim to practice this who is the Muslim is going to practice it to see it take a selfie before you raise your head before the Imam huh? and take a selfie after if Allah made your head the head of a donkey the Prophet was telling the truth if nothing happened the Prophet is a scumbag what do you say huh Mm. You don't want to do it. Don't don't forget, please, to uh, to do a time lapse video for us. I like to see that happening in time lapse uh, uh, recording, so we can. Anyway, anyway, guys, show some respect. I mean, what's wrong with you? This is a wisdom only believers can understand it. I mean, what's wrong? You see, you are laughing at Muhammad because you don't have a wisdom. How the Prophet Muhammad got the wisdom? Anyone remember? How Muhammad he got this wisdom, this amazing wisdom in front of us? Where did he get this from? Who remember? Ah, uh, come on, Suz, you can call me. So what if you live in Islamic community? Just call, come on. Don't practice taqiyya. Anyone knows how Muhammad he got his wisdom? By a dish. This wisdom is a special wisdom, a special order. <laughs> you see, I spent my life studying and I could not get the dish of wisdom like Muhammad. Muhammad did not go to school. Muhammad, they say, the Muslim, they say he's illiterate. <laughs> illiterate, look at this. I mean, it's obvious he is not illiterate. Look at this wisdom. According to the Muslims, Allah He sent a dish full of wisdom and full of faith. And then He made the plastic surgery for the Prophet chest. And this was the first plastic surgery in history. Must be a true story. And then, and by the way, the, the wisdom was sent in a dish, and this dish is made from gold. M made what? From gold. Do you see the story? I mean, oof, oof, oof. that's amazing. Let me, uh, I want to search for the other hadith. This is not the one I'm looking for. The other one is giving us more details. <clears throat> Let us see where. Here we go. <clears throat> Look at this. Look at this. The Prophet of Allah said, the, by the way, the Prophet never told a lie. Just take a note, please. We have here, we have to be sure and to confirm to you that the prophet everything he say is it true for he is a truthful prophet look at this i mean this is seriously astonishing i feel like i want to cry i hope i hope after i tell you this story not many of you convert to islam the Prophet of Allah said who is the one is talking the Prophet show respect Muslims while I was at the house between sleeping and being awake how is that can be <laughs> what's happening <laughs> Muhammad is not asleep is not is not awake I mean like he is between okay hmm. 
I heard someone saying, one is in the middle of a three. There are three. I thought there are two. I was brought a vessel of gold. I mean, for sure, they will not bring a vessel of plastic to the prophet. Are you kidding me? Do you think they will buy something from Walmart? Are you stupid or what? It must be a vessel of gold. So they brought a vessel of gold containing zam zam water. Zam zam water. So, look here, the action started. The first surgery, plastic surgery for breast expanding and washing. So my chest was split from here to here. Kutada said, the reporter, I said to Anas, what does that mean? From here to here. He said, to the lowest part of his stomach. Oof. Actually, here in the hadith, they don't show you the good right translation. Muhammad he was saying from here to here, from the upper side of his chest, which means like the side, the, the the bottom of his neck. What they call it, like the upper side of your uh, ribs, from here to here. So they cut from his uh, almost from the apple of Adam all the way to his balls. I mean, obviously this is a this is a this is the right cut. It's not a big. It's not big cut. Why? Listen, why? It's a it's a correct cut. He said, "My heart was removed." You see why they cut from here to here all the way to his balls because they want to take his heart. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what's in. All right, true story. I mean, true story. What I can say to you, I mean, you, we have to believe this. The prophet saying that, my friend, my brother, my brother. The prophet says so. The prophet says so. If the prophet says so, we believe it. That's it. Who does? Who dare to discuss? Actually, if this is true or not, who dare? Come on. Then, and washed with zam zam water then returned to it it's placed then it was filled with the faith of wisdom faith and wisdom <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oof. I don't know. I mean, this is too much. And look here, it says, here, look, look what the Muslim they say. There is a long story with this hadith. Where is the story? The story is, you see, I'm reading for you the shortcut of the story. The story is even more funny. Because in different uh, narration, it says that the, the, the wisdom was in the, in the dish. A dish of wisdom and dish of faith. Now, Muslims, Allah, he made a surgery for the Prophet Muhammad. And as you see, you're a prophet saying that he, he needed a surgery in order to be faithful and to be wise. Can I get the same faith and wisdom by surgery? I mean, this is not fair. What kind of God? He makes surgeries only for a certain person what about the rest of us what is my fault me as a Christian prince not to believe and to laugh at Muhammad if Allah he make a you know a surgery and he uh, you know uh, he put faith in my chest 
you know, then I will believe. All what is missing is the surgery. Any Muslim? Let us see. You see how the story actually changed from uh, the, the event. Look how long the story. Look at this. Unbelievable. If I read this story for you, I will spend the coming 10 days. Look at this story. Abu Dhar used to say that Allah Messenger S A W F N O O 7711 said. While I was in Mecca, the roof of my house was open. Look at the story here, it changed. Before it was between he is asleep and awake and snoring. Now, uh, Suze, I'm not going to answer you unless you call me. Uh, so, the roof opened and Jibreel descended. Uh, you see, Jibreel, don't come from the door. This guy, you opened the roof. But do he need to open the roof? What do you mean he opened the roof? Jibreel, look at the roof. My roof is opening. Now, Jibreel, he opened my chest. In the other story, there was more than one person. Now, there's only Jibreel. And wash it with Zamzam water. You know what? I never thought about Jibreel that his real name is Dr. Jibreel. Eesh. Eesh. Look like Jibreel. He graduated from uh, Stanford University, the medical uh, branch. All right. Then he brought a golden tray full of wisdom and faith. Look at this. Okay, thank you, my friend. For those who want to leave to work, to work, please, my friend, don't don't forget, don't forget. All right. If somebody somebody accuses you that you have a problem with your testicles, all what you need to do. Go to the beach, find a big rock, and this rock looked like Islamic somehow. Put your clothes there, and then Allah will do the miracle. And all your friends and all your neighbors will see you running in the street naked. Praise be to Allah. Guys, do you see it there that it says that this tray was full of wisdom and faith? That is Islam. That is the religion of the dump and the fairy tale stupidity. A prophet who got his wisdom in a dish. A prophet who got his faith in a dish. Now I know why every Muslim in the Middle East he have satellite dish in the roof. I thought because of porn. Not true. Obviously, because they are trying to receive wisdom from Playboy Station and faith from uh, the Turkish station. Do you know the Turkish station? Don't watch Turkish station, man. Guys, did you see the videos of this guy with his name? The one I spoke about him in my book, in my both uh, both English books, Harun Yahya. This guy he keep inviting prostitutes, and he he broadcast live, he broadcast live live video dancing with them. Their breast is coming out. Their skirt is like one, the skirt is like one inch. I mean, look how lucky I am, man. I mean, look look at the difference between my life and his life. He is doing dawa. I'm doing dawa. He got the beautiful prostitute. I got you. Look at you. All of you are. You look like me. I will not answer your question. Everything in that Quran is a copy of somewhere. Are you comfortable now? Everything from the first verse to the last verse. Except the sexual verses of Muhammad. Any verse about money and sex, it is the creation of Muhammad. The rest, it is a creation, but he is copying. Are you happy? Any Muslim?
Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? No one? Do you see how much Muslims are confident with their religion? How much brave they are? How much proud about it? Obviously, none of them need there to call because they knew this this is stupid cult can survive only with those who do not know much about Islam. The second Abdul they notice the Mohammedan, they notice that you know, they go underground. Copy from everywhere. You see the Muhammad, he copied from everywhere. Some he copied from the Torah, some he copied from the, the, the gospel, some he copied from the, 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 the Persian, some he copied from the Indian, some he copied from the Ethiopian, some he, he copied from the people of Yemen. He copied from everybody. Nothing in his religion is his own made. Christian, Sabian, the, the pagan Arab, the 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 Zeradish, the Persian, uh, the Indian, you know, all of this is, uh, is is a copy. This is why you notice Muhammad, he was saying that Adam was an Indian. Does it come to your mind why Adam was Indian, according to Islam? Because this is where the origin of Islam is coming from. The Black Stone, the Shiva Stone, the Vagina, this is all is coming from there from, from India. If you go right now and look at how <clears throat> how the Muslim they do Hajj. Look how they dress. Ask yourself where this is coming from. Is that Arabic tradition? It doesn't make sense. The Arab doesn't wear this clothes. Why they get naked? Why they are wearing? Uh, why they cover a shoulder and they show a shoulder? Is that an Indian tradition? Clothes? Yes. This is an you know like if you go and and, and check uh, uh, the 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 Buddha and the, the the Hindus, you will see there is a lot of similarity between them, you know, and if you look at the priest and the clothes of the priest, you will see that it's like somebody is copying, obviously, from them. We cannot say that the, the, the Hindus or the Buddhas are coming from Muhammad because they are exist long before Islam is exist. Any Abdul? Not even one? Now the one is saying to me, I'm ignoring him. I don't know what you are saying. Do you think I watch always the, the, the chat? I cannot do that, my friend. You want to talk to me? Call me. We have a Skype. Any brave Muslim? No Muslims. Zero Muslims as usual. Anyway, um, I think we have enough for today. Uh, remember, our we do broadcast during the week, and not only the three days fixed days. We have a three fixed date, which is Sunday like today, and the Friday, and Wednesday at four thirty p.m. New York time. However, during the week, sometime I do in different timing. Sometime early morning my time, which means it's going to be like night time for Asia. Uh, sometime noon time depend. So this is fixed three days, but the rest they can be in any time. So please subscribe in order to be notified about our broadcast. And if you want to have really a better, let us say, uh, uh, a challenging uh, debate, you better do your best to challenge Muslims to come and call me. If you really want to hear the real side of the story, let the Muslims call me because I want to show you that Islam is a stupid, not because I am saying so. I will make the Muslims say it to you. 
but you need to help me to bring me some Abduls to call. And don't worry about how big the Abdul is. The bigger, the better. Which means the one who claimed to be a scholar, this is the one actually I like to have. I never said I need to set up a debate time. I am ready anytime. The Abdul, because they are coward, they choose a topic, and then they go to the internet and they print 1,000 pages, and then copy-paste. They have no knowledge. In my case, call me. Don't tell me tomorrow, then tell me today. Call me, surprise me. Surprise a Christian prince and call him if you are a Muslim. And let us see how good you are. Are we good? Because they have no knowledge, they ask you to set up a special topic and two months in advance. Ask yourself why in the world somebody need to do two months to answer a question. How stupid he is that he need two months. If they are people of knowledge, they will be able to answer in the spot. Not next year. So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And if anyone would like to get a dish of faith and dish of wisdom, don't forget to go and drop some donation. So I will call Allah for you and he will send you some dishes made of gold and silver and full of faith and wisdom. Thank you and may the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.